Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Escape Pod. Thank you so much for escaping with us. That's Andrew. I'm Alex. And as always, with great power comes great gambit ability. Everybody buckle up. We're talking about X-Men 97. I'm telling them right now. Spoilers. We're jumping into it. I'm sorry. I want to talk about it. Okay. I want to talk about it. You, you just w- watched it for the first I time. I just watched I've it. I've watched it now for the second time. We just watched it with the Discord. This was the most fun one by far yeah. of the watch parties we've had. Uh-huh. Obviously, that had to do with how great of an episode it uh-huh. was. But we had the most people, and uh-huh. it was a lot of fun. And I was taking videos of you the whole episode. Oh. So we will be posting that on our Instagram. Make sure you're following our Instagram at the Escape Pod Podcast. The link is in the bio or the description. Um, make sure you're following the Instagram because I'm going to be posting a compilation of your various reactions <laughs> on Instagram on Monday. So as soon as this episode is out, you guys are going to have that because you 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 were hilarious. I I I, I okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, also after the episode, the episode ended when we we talked about stuff for like another thirty minutes yeah, to an hour yeah. with just everyone in there. Yeah, I said literally nothing the entire time. You, I couldn't speak. Yeah, I couldn't speak. What do you What do you want to start with? The fact that I cried. <laughs> like okay so episode five mm-hmm. of x-men 97 is the best episode so far yes and in my opinion i think it's one of the best animated tv show episodes i've ever seen of anything ever great um we will come back to that thought sure because mm-hmm. i have a rebuttal about that i like i was watching it and like it was attack on titan level awesome for me yeah and that's like my favorite show of all time yeah. and like a like avatar level awesome to yeah me. um you, do we want to compare it to the rest of the MCU? Yeah. It's okay. better. Uh, it, it is. It is. It's better. But the thing is, like, it is easier, I think, probably, to make something that good that's 30 minutes in a sectioned off little that's animated yep. thing. That's fair. I think it's easier. It's still difficult, obviously, because we've gotten a lot of crap. Yeah. Um, but, like, comparing it to something like Infinity War is just, it's a two and a half hour long movie mm-hmm. with a cast of 30 stars after 10 years of lead up. Like, it's just different. It's hard to compare those two things. Um, so, I'm not going to say it's my favorite thing the MCU has ever done, but I understand it being in that conversation. But we are five episodes in. Each episode of X Men 97 has been 30 minutes long, okay? Mm-hmm. For me, there is 30 minutes of it being subpar. For you, it's. 15 minutes of it being subpar. We've had two hours and 30 minutes of content. This is a great point. Where where you just brought up, you're you're, you're right. Infinity War is probably, but it's so consistent. Episode one is a nine out of 10. Episode two is a 10 out of 10. Episode three is a 10 out of 10. Sure, episode four is like a five or six out of 10, but episode five, it's an 11 out of 10. It's crazy. No, that's a great point. That's a great point. And we've got, what, five more? Yes. And the showrunner said like, this episode is the start of, the rest of the epic. Yes. Um, yeah. No. No. I. I. Yeah. No. So I. Like. I. When I'm watching something and I'm actively like, I can't believe this is what I'm watching. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt. Yeah. And we're spoiling it. So, can I? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. What do you want to start with? Because I actually, the bars in this episode <laughs> from whom. Everybody, everybody's got bars. Uh, Magneto literally says the line, "We will not indulge. We will not remember. We will not look back at this moment and dwell on uh, who, who we could have saved more lives or something like <laughs> yeah, that." It's yeah. crazy. It's no, every bar. Uh, freaking um, Nightcrawler's in it. Okay, so yes, A plus. The, the, the positives. And they just, nailed him. They nailed they Kurt. Did. They oh. nailed Kurt. They nailed him. Oh, 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 boy. Wow, this is what they're paying for. We're basically out of paper towel. <laughs> You're just moving it around. Is this water? Uh, yeah. Okay, this table needed a cleaning anyway. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got a little excited. No, he says one when he's talking to Gambit, and he's looking at Rogue, and he's like, your souls are intertwined or yes. something. And he's like... I don't know, he said something, or I literally in the Discord was like, wow, that was a bar about love. Yes. No, it was like, um, love, uh, the accurate representation of love is the amount of sins being able to be forgiven, or something yes. like that. It, it, was was like, it was crazy. Like, what the? Yes. And then when freaking Cyclops and Jean are arguing, they throw bars at each other. Yes, and Cyclops, wait, how about, how about the, 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 the <laughs> truth is, you guys are nothing like us, and thank God, because you don't need that. <laughs> I was like, and then, and then they're arguing, and he's and she's like, 
do you even love me or is it just you love my clone? He's like, well, do you even love me? You don't even know if you remember me. No, no, no. And then she's like, she's like, that's all I remember is my love for you. And he's like, is it a memory or a feeling? Oh my Dude. gosh. Okay. There are also moments in this episode. And I assume people recorded this because you said you recorded it. So other people were sending screenshots of my faces. Yeah. Logan. Also, shout out Logan because Gene kisses him. Yep. And Logan's the the man because he's he, so in love with her. He's so in love with her. All he cares about is her. And he lets it be known, but he has his lines. She kisses him and he immediately is like, that was a mistake. Like, you, <laughs> like we're just going to move on from that. Yes. Like, and just like... What a homie! Yes! That was crazy! Yes! Okay. Which leads me to believe, I don't want to get too into this, but theory-wise, I think the way this season is going, it's probably leaning towards a Jean Grey, Logan Wolver uh, uh, Wolverine romance and a Madeline Pryor, Scott that romance, which is fascinating! Literally, when they, when they did the Madeline Pryor thing in the first couple episodes, or whatever... I said, I was like, oh, there's one for each of them now. <laughs> but I thought it would be reversed. Right, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. I don't know. Uh, but I guess they were teasing that. Because in episode two, you mean, I mean that much to you? More. <laughs> like, yeah, no, crazy. They were teasing at that? Yeah, Dude, holy crap. And that even like smaller, like Beast was not in this episode a lot. No. But like the little bits that he's in, when he's like, yes. even Blue can blush. Just yes. like little lines, like the writing. Really good. Okay. You get to Genosha. Yes. And the the love triangle with Gambit and Rogue and Magneto is great. What the frick is Rogue doing? I don't know. She's telling Gambit, like, hey, I can't have sex with you, so we can't be together, basically. Which, fair. A little bit. A little bit. Like, if you could never hug or kiss the person you love, you know, like, that's a problem. And then she all shows up. She's floating down like a goddess. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, shoot. Yep. And then they start dancing together. It was like, and they start making out. And they're like, oh, shoot. Yep. And then after that, she's like, nah. Yeah. What? That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. Like, why'd you do the big whole entrance mm -hmm. dance scene in front of everybody mm -hmm. if you're going to say nah? Bro, okay. So, the, so there are moments in the show that got reactions out of me and yeah. were epic and they were spaced out well. This episode's not boring at all, no. at all. From the moment where he kisses her at the start or yep. she kisses him and yep. I was like, oh! And then you get to Genosha and obviously the insane last five to 10 minutes yep. is just, mm -hmm. like I know it happens in the comics and like stuff like that happens yes. in the comics but like I don't know it well enough. Yeah. But like. To you, this is the greatest moment of X-Men action you've ever seen. You mean with Gambit? In general. Uh, I the mean, X Men movies never do this. And no. That's all you know from X Men other than the original cartoon. The This cartoon, 97, has so far surpassed the original cartoon already for me. Yeah. So basically, the genocide of Genosha starts. Cable shows up. And you're like, what? There, oh, there's just so many moments where you're like, like when they start making out in the air and you're like, oh, poor Gambit. And like, then freaking there's a nuke all of a sudden and everyone's dead, but not. And then Kurt is hurt. And then like Magneto's throwing bars at everyone and Magneto's going toe to toe with this freaking Godzilla mech thing. Oh, oh, it's so good. The the song choice. I, I, I noticed this the first time watching, but really the second time watching. Mm -hmm. The song choice for them dancing in the air. Yeah is a very beautiful dancing song, but it is so somber and haunting so quickly as soon as they remove the drums. And it's, I, like, I was floored. I was like, what a great song choice. Yeah. Uh, I, it's just so, uncom you're so uneasy, so quickly. Soon as Cable's in there, you are freaking out. Yeah, no, and from then to the end, you are like, I was raptured, I like, raptured, enraptured? Raptured? Enamored. Enamored? Mm. There's a rapture type word that I'm thinking of. I'm not like Jesus isn't coming back. That's the rapture. Is it? Yeah. Okay. You know what is coming rapture, back? X-Men. Rapture Jesus? <laughs> Batman with prep time. Okay. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. <laughs> um, so yeah. The most epic point in the show is well Magneto goes goes ham, Rogue goes ham, Magneto goes ham. It's all great fun and happy. Mm -hmm. Um It was so epic watching Gambit F up the mega thing. What's it called? 
uh, 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 master mold. Master mold. Whatever the frick. Yeah. It's a whole thing. He's stabbed in his gut. He's like, mon ami. Or whatever the frick he says. And yeah. blows it up. Yes. Bro, I... <laughs> the bar of the episode. The episode's named after this bar. It's such yeah. a hard bar. He goes, mutant, like detained or something like that. And he goes, the name's Gambit, mon ami. Remember it. <laughs> ah! it. Oh, he blows ah! it up. It's electric. Bro, and... Oh, I forgot another bar. Okay. Can I have, have this sure, real sure, quick? Sure, 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 sure. You light up everything you touch except me. <laughs> yeah! Just shatter his heart, why don't you? <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Um, when he freaking... The, also, the animation of the fighting. Dude, he gets... He's doing the thing to get up there, and yeah. then he jumps at it, and he gets stabbed. And then there's, like, a shot where it, like, lifts him up, and, like, he's just hanging there with the thing in his side, and it's, he's, like, silhouetted, like, against the face of the thing, and you're like, oh, that's freaking cool, and then he blows it up. Oh. It's incredible. And, and then when it cuts to black, and she's like, I can't feel you. So good. What? Yeah, it's what? so good. Dude. It's... <laughs> She kisses Logan, and you're like, oh, and then Cyclops goes off on the reporter, and you're like, what's happening? And then Nightcrawler shows up, and you're like, oh, that's my boy. And then freaking a nuke goes off, and you're like, what? And then Game it blowing stuff up, bro. And the and they're dancing in the sky. Bro, it was crazy. It was crazy. The whole thing's crazy. It's it was pretty true. The whole thing's crazy. So I feel I was crying. Like the whole like after it blew up, and you're like, who's dead? Who's alive? I was just like Tears. So I watched it at midnight when it came out. Yeah. With me, my girlfriend Rachel, our roommate Angel, Double A Rugs, and our roommate Zach. Mm -hmm. And when the explosion happened, the way it is cut together made all of us think that was the end of the episode. And mm. we we're expecting a classic X Men to be continued. And I, we couldn't deal with the suspense. I grabbed the remote and I paused it to see 10 minutes left. And all of us unanimously went, Oh, oh thank God. God! Oh, thank God! Yeah, but still, it's still such a cliffhanger. It is. But yeah, no, that's that's. But it was a very funny moment, and I imagine a lot of you guys at home maybe had to similar. No, moment. I checked. How about the Watcher? Yeah, I definitely noticed that. The Watcher was ready to watch some fuck shit happen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was like I, I like I I was like. I was like pointing. I was like, I Why saw you. Yeah, I have it on video. <laughs> you, you no one said anything about you know, it. Yeah, because I, I think all of us have seen it at Twitter, on yeah. Twitter and shit. Yeah, 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 because yeah. that was all over Twitter. But yeah, Watcher, which connects it to the MCU more. You remember we had this discussion uh, maybe a week ago or two weeks ago where we were comparing X-Men 97 to What If and whether or not X-Men 97 could be considered the MCU. And I said it's as in the MCU as What If. And you disagreed fairly because, you know, in that, it's like Jeremy Renner plays Hawkeye and they look yeah. like them and this and that. And the Watcher is just a big Marvel character anyways. Yes, but I thought that was like even more so. Yeah, that that's a little bit getting closer. Yeah. But like if you're gonna do anything like that's the way, like a silhouette of the watcher. I'm with you. Like that doesn't mean it's gonna connect no, in any way. And I don't th I hope it doesn't connect. Yeah, me neither. Keep this separate. Yeah. Because it's so good. Um, but holy crap. So obviously I completely trust Kevin Feige with the X Men going forward in the MCU, but they fired the lead showrunner. Of this? Yes. Why the frick? I don't exactly know. I think it has a controversy to do with his OnlyFans. <laughs> uh, that would do it. What? I'm not, like, fucking with you right <laughs> now. I'll this? show you his Twitter. Is this a bit? No. Has he got a schlong on him? I don't know. We could check. Dude, he's, I'll freaking subscribe if he's, he's giving us this. He's re Yeah, dude, I'm telling you. Dude, that was wild. <laughs> Speaking of. Oh, no. Bo we'll DeMaio. Bo DeMaio? Yeah, here, let me pull up his Twitter. They fired him. You can... Bone my Mayo. Yeah, look, look. So it's like all X Men ninety seven executive producer creator head writer X Men ninety seven, and you're scrolling, and then then there he is. That's him. Yeah, man's man's jacked. Yeah, gay Twitter is not like regular Twitter, whatever regular Twitter is. And then has a this. I don't want to show. Yeah, why would you? Why would you do that? And then here's. Yeah, and then it's don't, X Men ninety seven. Don't, 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 don't show. Don't show. Don't show. Bo De Mayo Twitter. But, uh, yeah, they fired him. Well. So, like, now I'm not feeling too good. Eh, we'll see. That's fair. But, uh... If we, uh so, the episode five yes. of X-Men 97... Yes. 
is one of my favorite TV show episodes ever. Thank you. I wanted to go back to this. Um, you know, some of my favorite TV show episodes ever. Yes. Um, uh, there's some episodes of Attack on Titan that I yes. really like. Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yes. Um, there's a couple comedic episodes of Rick and Morty that I think are really, really yeah. good. Um, I think this is the best animated TV show episode Marvel or Disney Plus has created. Yes. So it's you're, better than any episode of What you're, If. Clearly. You're going to say animated. You're just going to put no, that stamp I'm sorry, on it. I'll do both. Disney Plus. Episode five of X Men '97 is better. It's the best episode of any Disney Plus show I've seen. Yes. Can we go forward to just Disney Plus exclusive things, including the Werewolf by Nights of the World and everything? Yeah, anything. It's what's better than it. There's not a single episode of WandaVision that's better. There's a couple episodes of Loki maybe that are close, but no. Again, like I'm agreeing with you on all these points, but I will rebuttal with these facts. The last four episodes of Clone Wars are tremendous. Yes. The Siege I think, of Mandalore. I think, I think this is better than the Siege of Mandalore. <laughs> yeah. There's, wow. I, I do. I watched the Siege of Mandalore. I thought it was very good. I was locked in for it. Uh, and there's parts of it where I was like, wow, this is like when she's with Rex trying yeah. to escape and all that and her duel with uh, Maul. Maul. All of that was like, I was locked. I was not as locked. I, I was more locked in this episode. I wow. was more okay. Okay, I'm just asking you because I think I'm picking Siege of Mandalore over episode five of yeah. X-Men well, look at your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, let me ask you: d- Does this include any episode of any sure. of the shows? Yeah. Any what, of the Disney shows? What shows? What are you talking about? I really like episode three of Hawkeye. No, I it's like better. episode five of Loki season one. It's I better. like. Yeah, wow, you're taking it over every, you're taking it over episode two of WandaVision. It's better. Yeah. It's better. It's better. It, it's phenomenal. I, I I'm enjoy, not necessarily I enjoy, disagreeing with you. I enjoyed all of those episodes. There's not an episode that I laughed at, reacted at, reacted to more, cried at more, and thought was more epic and well written. And you're you're taking it had all of those. You're taking this over the suspenseful episode six of season one of Mandalorian. The prison break episode is tremendous. Mandalorian might get me, but that I, is I, tremendous. I, and then you haven't seen any of Andor. The uh, yeah. one way out is one of the greatest episodes of television I've you ever seen. You like it better than this? I don't know. I don't know. This is up there. This belongs in the conversation. But I felt that episode two of this season belonged in the conversation and probably episode three as well. I think that's how good I've thought this show has been. This is just reaching the heights that I expected it to. If you were doing a top five of the MCU period. As of right now, if X-Men 97 ended with this and this X-Men 97 through five episodes is my favorite MCU project, I think it's better than Infinity War. I think it's, I still think it's just so so hard to compare. And you're never gonna like something better than Avengers One. No, and like No Way Home, like yeah, like there are just parts of that. Like X Men ninety seven hasn't given me the journey that the MCU overall Phase One, Two, and Three did. And of course, in, and Infinity War is represented in that. Of you know course. what I mean? And you get all these people that you've been hanging out with for thirteen years. You of get Spider Man. You get mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. Like. That's just more ingrained in me, as is the first Avengers, which mm-hmm. I memorized and all that stuff, than X Men '97. Mm-hmm. But like, I can still recognize that. Yeah, that'd probably be top five. Yeah. Like Infinity War, Avengers, Winter Soldier, No Way Home. This are the ones that come to mind for me. Yeah. Um, so here's something else I want to bring up because we've talked about our favorite Disney Plus projects, our favorite mm-hmm. streaming projects, etc. X Men '97 through five episodes, it's this good. Obviously, we don't believe that through five episodes, WandaVision reached the heights of this. Mm -hmm. But through five, six, seven episodes, us WandaVision fans were eating pretty good. And it wasn't until the finale where a lot of people were disappointed by the reveal of what was actually going on in Westview. Do you expect... X-Men 97, or at least see a possibility where X-Men 97 may take this momentum and crash and burn? I Well, I, I'm, I'm never expecting something to continue a 10 out of 10 momentum. Absolutely. Have, ever. Yeah. Anytime you give me a 10 out of 10 thing, even though you've done it before, I'm going to be happily surprised. We didn't expect Across the Spider-Verse to be as good as the first one. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, but the fact that they are so... Um, faithful and honoring to the original like source material of this they have so much good juicy stuff to pull from and Mm -hmm. that's what they've done with Madeline Pryor and Sinister and Cable and Genosha and Magneto like 
they're using stuff already that has proven to be an amazing story. So I, I kind of have faith that they'll at least continue it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they already know where they're going with this probably because they've, they've read it. Yeah. Um, they're not making up some bull crap. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's really been a beautiful thing to see. And I'm, I'm, I'm ready to see the X-Men like swoop in and start doing stuff. Cause like in, in this episode, they're just, a lot of them are just watching. Like Rogue Gamut is, are there, but like we didn't see Logan do anything. We didn't mm -hmm. see Jean Grey do anything. We didn't see um, Cyclops do anything, mm -hmm. Beast. Like, so like when they get, when they're like, oh, this is going down, someone's attacking us. And then the X-Men swoop in. I think it like, we see Wolverine start doing like. Ah! Shall we move on to theories? Sure. Timey wimey stuff is going on because Cable's there. Anytime yeah. Cable shows up, something's getting screwed around with. How do they handle timey wimey stuff in X Men? Like, are they going to handle it like the MCU handles no, it? No, it's not going to be something. I'm going to have a problem with it. It's then. it's back to the future rules, right? Yeah, if you that do sucks. something, then they're going to change it, right? They can continually go back to this moment, and that'll change the present. Yeah, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. So you think anyone's going to? I think anybody that died in that scene is going to be alive. Do you think he's dead? Gambit? Mm -hmm. Yes. You don't think they're going to do anything to bring him back? Not Tommy Wimey. No, no, no. No, you think he's dead dead? He's dead in this, right? If they do something Tommy Wimey, they can bring like, him back. You don't think maybe he'll just be in a concussion for a while and Beast will somehow figure it out? No, he is dead. And you can make an argument to me that you, I think you see Madeline Pryor's body. I think you can make an argument that a lot of these mutants are dead. I don't think any of them are staying dead. If Madeline Pryor is the body that I'm thinking of right now, she's not staying dead either. They're not killing her. You don't, but like Could they, they purposely rid it, wrote it where most of them weren't there and most of them didn't die. I know. Do you think Magneto's dead? No. I uh, did. I, I explained the leech theory mm -hmm. on to the, the people that watched it with the discord with us. We stayed on for like 30 minutes after talking about the show. My theory is with Magneto is the green alien with the beanie looking mutant. His name is leech. And uh, uh, Leech's powers, at least in the comics, we haven't seen in this show yet. But it's it's he's essentially the collar. Yeah, he could suppress a mutant's power. Um, uh, and and so my thought process is is that there are plenty of comics where just being around him suppresses your power, or him touching you suppresses your power. Well, clearly neither of those are factors because. Magneto's been around him now twice, and he's holding on to Magneto when Magneto says, don't be afraid in German. Oh, and the fact that Magneto was like, don't help me, and like, wrapped, It's wrote. incredible. It's incredible. And when he's angry, you see flashbacks from the Holocaust. It's unbelievable. But so my theory with Leech is... I want to go watch it again. ...that Leech used his powers in that moment. Magneto stopped the blast somehow, moved them, and then Leech uses his powers in that so, moment, suppress it. So that's why the Sentinel would say Omega, Omega level threat eliminated. Right. Because yeah. that would no, eliminate that's... the powers there. How many episodes do you think we're going to... So yeah, it's, I think it's obviously more likely that, that Gambit is dead and Magneto is alive. Yes. I'm hoping they're both alive. Gambit's been such a good part of this And this season. episode specifically. I mean, they just nailed it. Um... Yeah. Uh, how many episodes do you think Magneto is going to be gone? Like, do you think he's not coming back to the finale? Do you think he's going to come back next episode? That is such a good question. I would expect it to be the next episode that deals with this saga. Because I don't... You don't think they're going to immediately deal with this to next episode? Next episode is going to be the continuation of the Storm story. Mm, okay. The Storm and Forge. It's life and I death. Think it's, I think it's going to be two or three episodes. He's coming back in like seven or eight. That's fair. That's, that's, a, that's a very fair prediction. I could also see another Jubilee episode in here. Which no, would suck. no, 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 no. You and I. <laughs> no. Yeah, but uh, overall, I mean, just a tremendous show. I'm glad that you liked this episode as much as we did, as much as all of us did. It's just, yeah, it's just. Since Disney, Disney owns like all of the properties that mean something to me. Right, they own all, almost all of Marvel. They own Star Wars. They own so many things that I love. They own all the Disney movies, obviously. And X-Men 97 feels like one of my favorite things that Disney has ever done. Yeah. I'm just really happy to be enjoying it and having the podcast to talk about. Yeah, no, I, I got emotional watching it because we... we I think this might be one of the questions in the thing is like, 
are we ever going to get like longer episodes and more episodes a week? And we can talk about that later, but it's like we have I have we have a lot of stuff going on. Like we got the the podcast and we try to post TikToks and we got the Patreon and then I got the What Fellow stuff and I've been doing it for so long and I've talked about like the ups and downs of that and like my main thing right now is just like trying to figure out like what I want to do <laughs> like mm-hmm. with What Fellow, like why do I want to make content anymore? Like where's the passion? Where's the motivation? What's it for? And like that's a big goal of mine this this year is to like make stuff because I want to, not because I feel like I need to. And like, I, oh god, it was so much fun. <laughs> Being able to watch it with people, and like, and like we were literally on the call with everybody, and I like I didn't say anything for like thirty minutes because I was just listening to people and talking about it. I was like, do you want to go? Fi-? Like I wanted to go film like right now. Um, and like it was it was a nice moment after like a week this past week has just been very like what the frick do I make what do I do like why why should I make anything you know what I mean mm-hmm. but I was like we just watched it with a bunch of people we got to go talk about it with a bunch of people and like people will enjoy it so um, it was a nice moment of like not having to second guess it again <laughs> of yeah. like why do I make it like this was just like this show was so awesome and the community is so awesome and the podcast is so awesome it's like of course I'm gonna go do this like yeah. I want to do this I'm not doing this because I have to I want to I'm doing this because I want to yeah. and um, so thank you for watching joining the watch parties and thank you for joining the Patreon and speaking of my hair is gonna change soon so yes that's they're thing. currently voting on the bracket <laughs> yeah to change your hair but buzz cut is moving on as of right now. Oh, very exciting. Um, <clears throat> uh, can I share real quick? Uh, uh, so you guys have been unbelievable um, in my DMs on Instagram, the DMs on Instagram of the podcast and the Patreon DMs and the comments on YouTube and the comments on TikTok. And you guys have been unbelievable. The support from our last episode where I talked about um uh, a suicide and where I talked about some personal stuff when it came to episode four of season two of Invincible and the the messages I've gotten and and and, and one or two of them pertain specifically to uh, my mother so I, I I send them to her and the text she sent me today um, <laughs> uh, she said uh, well, she watched the pod, and then she said, just watch the new episode. I'm so proud of you. And I said, I love you so much. You know, thank you. She said, you have helped hundreds of kids. Uh, you, you you don't even know it. Um, uh, and, and, and just hearing that uh, from my mom and her being uh, proud of me for what I'm doing. And, you know, my mom's always been super supportive, always been super proud of me, everything like that. But, um, you know, having a topic that pertained kind of to our family twice in last episode you guys have been just unbelievable and uh you guys are the best fucking community in the world and i'm so so grateful that you guys are the best and a special thank you to the patreon because this podcast does not exist without the patreon this podcast would not be possible so as always a round of applause for the patreon you guys are the MVPs, but all of you are MVPs. If you support us in any sort of way, you subscribe, you bought the merch, you bought, you know, you, 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 you're subscribed to the Patreon, you follow us on Instagram, you follow us on TikTok, everything. You are the best people in the world and we love you so much and you're the coolest people in the world and we love doing this for you and you let us know what you want us to do. Always open to suggestions. Yeah, for real. Speaking of, thanks for 97 pretty good show to make exclusive merch off of. I'm pretty excited yeah. that we did that. Yes. Because it turned out to be a pretty good gamble. <laughs> oh, that's so good. We're getting them in soon and we'll, we'll be wearing them and everything. But, oh yeah, uh, probably next episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so look out for that. But we love you guys so much. Do you want to move on? Yeah. All right, let's move on. I love you. Hey, I love you more. This is the best job in the world. Shout out you and me. No, for, shout out you. Are you kidding me? Create, None of this exists for Creating, I know, but like, you know, it's us. It's not me. It's not you. It's us. We created mm-hmm. something that's, you know, that didn't exist a year ago. And I think a lot of people are glad it, it does. Yeah, me too. I love you, buddy. Fan segment. Cool. Uh, I was expecting one of my segments, but that's oh, fine. Oh, I'll go fuck myself. Oh. No, 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 no. Pull down the no, fan no, segment. No, no, no. no, no, no what no. the fuck do you want to do? No, no. no don't no, worry no, about no. it. We'll do literally, your fan segment. Literally, I'll say the F word. Wait. If. Hold on. Let me say that's right. No, I can't. There's no way around that. I'm not going to say the F word. You know what? I have it written down that we were doing the fan segment before this anyway. (laughs) I was wrong. I was wrong. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So probably by next episode, my hair will be different. But may, it, that's it, a strong maybe. It might be a, a it week. It might or two. be two weeks, but definitely by two weeks. By by the time this episode comes out, we will know what we're doing with my hair. It ne won't necessarily yes, be. Yes. It so I'm literally just growing done. everything out until then. But yeah. Yes, so exactly. Stay stay tuned for that, I guess. Yeah. Very exciting. Be ready to make and, fun. And uh, let us know what we should do for 600 patrons. Pretty big milestone. Yeah. Bigger than 500, I would say. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's more people. Uh, three stay, one gets deleted from existence. Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, and Madagascar. This is pretty easy for Wait, me. Wait, three stay, one gets deleted? You delete one. Madagascar. Yeah, that's correct. Obvious. I mean, it's easily Shrek or Madagascar for me. I think Kung Fu Panda and How to Train Your Dragon are like miles above the other two. No, no. See, this was an easy answer, and you've gone and said something stupid. Sure, yeah, yeah. Shrek is uncuttable in this. Shrek is overrated. Um... But I'm still keeping Shrek because I like it at least a little bit, and the cultural impact has nowhere near. I like near. Madagascar. I like all of these a little but bit. Does, uh, does do I get to keep the Penguins of Madagascar TV show and movie? No, that's gone. Then freaking no, I'm getting rid of Shrek probably. Then you're getting rid of Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. Mm. I Shrek one and Shrek two are amazing. They're and Puss in Boots: overrated. The Last Wish is amazing. No. Puss, Puss in Boots: Puss in Boots: The Last Wish is better than both Shreks, by the way. No, I don't think I'm giving that to yeah, you. Yeah, well, I'm giving it to myself. Um, I like the penguins. The 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 thing with what's his name? The octopus. The I have no idea. The what penguins of Madagascar about. movie I never with the watched octopus. It. I never watched. What's it. his name? The guy in red who shoots the bazooka. Kowalski. No, I the don't guy, know what you're the movie about. Red. He's bald. John Malkovich voices the the octopus. Oh, that sounds hilarious. That movie is hilarious, and the whole time he's making puns. The whole time he's making puns, like he's he's talking to his little octopus squid henchman, and he's like, Nicholas, cage them. I've seen clips from that. Yes, it's hilarious. And there's a line, it's one of my favorite lines of any <laughs> any movie ever in this in this they they uh the penguins break into the national treasury to get a bunch of gold uh -huh. because they can't. And there's a vending machine in there. Uh-huh. And they're trying to get something out of the vending machine. And the vending machine starts attacking them. And they don't know why. And it sucks up. Tentacles come out of it. And it sucks up all the people except uh, the leader. What's his name? Skipper. Yeah. And Skipper, <laughs> after seeing the most ridiculous thing, a vending machine come alive and eat your friends. He just goes, I don't like your attitude, vending machine. <laughs> I, I had to pause the movie. I thought it was so funny. So I don't like your attitude, vending machine, and some subpar acting puns from John Malkovich. Yeah. He's better than Shrek 1, <laughs> Shrek 2, and Puss in Boots the last uh, wish. Puss in Boots, no, maybe not. But, but no, nah, I think it's really good. That's anyways, crazy. Anyways, yeah, I'll keep Shrek. Good. There we go. <laughs> Ooh. Shrek. Oh. A battle of the elements. Aang versus Storm. Who wins? No Avatar State, I think it'd be a close fight, and I think Storm might take it. With Avatar State, I think it's clearly Aang. Her feats are better. Are they? Yes. I don't think they are. Striking a desert with lightning and making a tornado of glass to destroy, give or take, 12 metal robots is a better feat than anything Aang has done. Yeah, but you have to think of it like... Maybe we haven't seen his biggest feats yet. Like, Kyoshi used the Avatar State to create an island. Absolutely. Like, and and he was moving entire, like, like, building tall, like, pillars of rock easily but and smashing through there them. There were storm feats in the comics where she created yeah. storms that, like, like, rival the storms on Jupiter. Do you think... Him turning into the giant Koizilla fish isn't a feat. You don't think he could take out 12 robots with that? But that was enhanced by the spirit of the, not the moon, the water. Yeah, but it was still him in the Avatar state. But it was enhanced by the spirit. He's all, he's connected to the spirit world. He can always enhance himself. I'm, I'm saying, I think he's got four elements. I think he's winning. She is all of the elements. She can't earth bend. You're right. She can airbend and strike lightning. She can do weather stuff. But she can remove his ability to firebend by making it snow, as we see in the Boiling Rock prison, right? They put them in ice because they can't firebend in there and whatever. Like, 
Yeah, but it's, Zuko was still firebending at the North Pole. Like, I don't think she can encase mm-hmm, him that mm-hmm, much. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm, that's he fair. might be able to just, like, take her powers. We've seen that happen before. If he, if he could get a hold of her, she can fly, he cannot. He can fly in the Avatar state. You don't, you don't, Fire Lord Ozai, with the enhancement of the comet, you don't think he can take down Storm? Or at least put up a fight? No. Aang, Aang treated him like a child when he was in the Avatar state. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Ozai and he Storm... All, Aang can also redirect lightning. If she uses lightning, that was your big thing. I know, I know, but she has multiple, like not, it's not a bending thing. She has lightning from the fucking sky. You're taking Storm over... You are underrating... Is this X-Men 97 Storm or is this comic Storm? It's just a general depiction of Storm. Because he's probably beating Halle, Bailey, Halle Berry. Yeah, well, movies always nerf characters. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'll give it to you, including the Avatar state. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you had to kiss one man, it can't be someone you know on the pod, fam, or friend. Who would it be? Your life depends on it. Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Yeah. After watching he, after watching Crazy Stupid Love, yeah. He is the man. Do you remember? Do you remember? I watched La La Land with you. It was the first time you had ever seen La La Land. Do you remember? I said probably 10 things that entire movie. Do you remember what I kept saying? He's so handsome. Every time you see him, he is the coolest, most well-dressed, most handsome man I've ever seen. I couldn't take my eyes off of him in Crazy Stupid Love. Of course not. And, well, what I think I think the top three because they've also kissed is Ryan Reynolds and Andrew Garfield. Remember when they kissed at the Oscars? That's a very funny clip. That's also. really funny. Yeah. Imagine coming home and be like, "Yo, I kissed Ryan Reynolds," but also Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm doing Ryan Gosling. I, Andy Serkis might be up there for me. He's done a lot for me. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to kiss you. I don't think Ryan Gosling wants to kiss me. That's a good point. That's a great point. Probably wants to kiss his beautiful wife. Do you think we would be arrested? Like if yeah. we, like we have to kiss But this oh. is but this is No, this is a selection, right? Like I like no Ryan Gosling would probably be one of the hardest people in the world to kiss. I'd figure I, it out. I would kiss somebody closer to me. Like that would be I'd easier. kiss like a ra- random guy if it's like police are gonna get involved, you know what I mean? But do you think you could go to court and be like, yo, my life depended on it and then get off? Probably not. You probably should have discussed that and gotten consent first. I don't think there's any scenario where a court of law would see that you, for lack of a better way of saying it, sexually assaulted somebody without consent. To live? Yeah, even even in a scenario where you need to do it to live. I don't, I don't think there's a scenario where the court is not going to at least partially penalize you for that. Do you see the guy that like kissed Will Smith interviewing him on the red carpet? It was a long, no. long time ago. No, it was like a, it was a guy who like did like stunts, and he acted like he was interviewing him, and at the end like kissed him on the cheek, and Will Smith was like smacked him. Well, of course he smacked him. He's known for that. <laughs> <clears throat> you oh. right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Dardalon, the patron. D- Dardalon, Dardalon, the patron. Yep. What would make you more upset? The new Harry Potter series blowing the ending again? <laughs> or live action Atla doing Zutara? Zutara. That's so funny. Not even close. Can you imagine? They do the, it. The, the, the new Harry Potter thing and it's just Voldemort disintegrates still, again. Yeah. No, that would be so funny. It would be so awful. <laughs> Dude, I also just can't get past the fact that, like, we're going to see another Voldemort on screen in the next few years. Like, so stupid. Hopefully he has red eyes. If Andrew hits 50, this is for you. If Andrew hits 50 without indulging in coitus, will you take one for the team and marry him so he can? Absolutely not. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, I I literally thought you were going to be like, absolutely. No. Darn it. You you wouldn't even, you would not. We just, we just had like a, such a bonding moment. I know. And you're not going to, you're not going to let me coitus you after that? If anything, I'd be coitusing you. No, no way. Uh, 100%. No way. I'm coitusing. I'm taller. I weigh more. What other statistics matter? Attitude matters. Confidence matters. Swagger matters. And that would be me. All right. If I dick you every time we play one-on-one in Smash, it means I'm dicking you in real life. No. Well, mm. Yeah, I might have to bow. Mm. Smash your past, Gene Gray. Three, two, one, smash. smash. Literally, like, 
Pretty much every iteration. Literally, and every chance she, every time she let me. Why is that confusing? Every time she'd let you, oh, because you're such a heartthrob. I didn't understand that. Wait, what? Every time she'd let smash you. Smash her past Jean, I'd smash literally every single time she'd let me. Oh, yes, obviously. Yeah. yeah sorry, I was confused. The verbiage confused the hell out of me. I'm sorry. I agree. Uh, Dylan, the daily trivia guy, the patron, if you could have an actual suit of any superhero and you get to keep it forever, no powers, what would it be? It's got to be like an Iron Man suit, no? But like no the, powers, does that count? No, like you get the, like you don't get superpowers, mm. but like the the nano suit. I would kill for an invincible suit that looks cool if we're talking no powers and like no Iron Man stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like if we're doing Like you just for fashion? Just for fashion, like you get to have it. There are no good invincible suits. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever seen like been to a Comic-Con or any of those and you've seen a good invincible suit? Oh, it's just yeah. a hard suit to do to cosplay. If we're know? just talking about like fashion and like iconicness, like a really cool Batman or Spider-Man suit would be cool, but yeah, I already I would, have one. I would look, you You have the best Spider-Man suit and you yeah. look great in it. I would look terrible in a Ben Affleck Batman. I don't want to copy you and have a Tasm too. <laughs> like those are my options. So a really cool invincible suit would be really cool. But if we're talking powers, I completely yeah, agree. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. I completely agree. What other suit? Iron like, Man, it's gotta be. Yeah. Uh-oh, are you cold? I figured you were. I'm very cold, and Rachel's over here sniffling. I'm sure the mic's gonna pick up one or two of those. She's been, <laughs> this whole episode. What you got? <laughs> can you this is my Rachel impression. <laughs> can you be slightly professional? <laughs> Wait, I have to do it a third time. <laughs> Comedy. Comedy. Experience hereditary or conjuring? Three, two, one. Conjuring. conjuring. Easy. So easy. Yeah, no, so I don't easy. want my sister's head coming off. Nope. I don't want my mom crawling on the ceiling. I don't want my dad to burn into flames. Nope. I don't want to become a mutant demon after I fall out of a window and nope. float up to a treehouse. Nope. And uh, conjuring, what? I, I got I to say Annabelle or Valak's name and I'm good? Yeah. Like, it's creepy. Also, generational trauma, but I'll be fine. Yeah, no, hereditary is on another level. And like, it, who, which character? Like, I assume you're like the the main, the brother. Is this Conjuring One? Because Conjuring then I'm One, really chilling. It's Conjuring One. He clarified. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, great. Can summary. Uh, the patron, I think. I don't know. Could Alex elaborate on why he hates the big CGI fests in the MCU? Uh, I example kaiju fight and Moon Knight, but then turns around and says he enjoys Godzilla X Kong. Very easy. He's kind of cooking. He's kind of cooking. That is a perspective I wasn't prepared for this, <laughs> this afternoon, though, <laughs> for my beliefs to be questioned. <laughs> because I could make the argument that mm -hmm. I'm showing up to the kaiju fights for the kaiju fights. Mm -hmm. But at this point in the MCU, why else are you watching the MCU? Because everything's a garbage, trash kaiju fight. Well, here's, a, here's an easy answer for you real quick is... The kaiju fights look good, and the MCU fights lately have not. The Moon Knight fight looks like garbage. The Shang-Chi fight, you just can't tell what's going on at all. So that- You couldn't tell in Godzilla x Kong either. That was one of my complaints. The whole the whole gravity fight was would have been way much better if I could tell what was going on. I, I agree with that, and I don't like that fight. But the fight in the city, or the fight on the pyramids, and the fight in the water, those were all awesome. So you can like big CGI fights. But that's what I'm showing up for, and I expect more from the MCU. You get more with the MCU. You just get both. But there are scenarios where I don't want both. Here, there is no Godzilla X Kong movie that isn't leading towards a big CGI kaiju fight. Shang-Chi was not. All of that comes completely out of left field. It does not belong in the rest of the movie. Same thing you can make the argument with Suicide Squad 1, which is a big issue with that movie, is the CGI creatures and the CGI F-fest in that, in that movie. There are multiple... In, in Moon Knight definitely was not leading to a big CGI kaiju fight but on like, the pyramids. You're acting like big battles at the end of superhero projects is out of left field and I don't think it is. I also I I like no that's fair. I like Godzilla. I like King Kong. I don't care at all for alligator woman number two fighting 
bird skeleton number three. It's not number three. That was, what's his? Yeah, I know. Kanchu. Kanchu. I can't believe I remembered that. Like, yeah, it's Kanchu and alligator lady. A noop, a noop, a a a a to put. But like, that's not out of left field. The whole point of the show was that he was trying to release her, and then she gets released, and we have to fight her. The whole point of Shang Chi was that his dad was trying to release this stuff, and then he releases it, and then we have to deal with the consequences. The Avengers, Loki is trying to make a portal. We're not just gonna just fight Loki. We have to fight the big CGI things in the sky. How many times can you see it? Because for the first time in my life, I saw you critique something based on repetitive, how repetitive it was, which was in last episode, you critiqued uh, Invincible because you were like, how many times can we see Mark get effed up by a Viltramite for us to know Viltramites are problems, right? Yeah. That, is, that is fair because we watch it four times in an eight episode season. Very fair. Very fair assessment by you. How many times from the same franchise can I see something? It was fresh and new in Avengers, and then every superhero movie for the next five years had a blue beam in the sky. I'm over it. I think that's okay. I think I think, I think that's okay think that's for me to be stretch. over that. I think that's a stretch comparing those two things. When 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 I look at my favorite superhero movies of all time, right? We just did this. We did this on the Patreon. Mm-hmm. Let me just pull up my list real quick <clears throat> because. We just did this on the Patreon, by the way. Subscribe to the Patreon if you want an extra episode a week. Um, but we just talked about this on the Patreon. It's it, I put my top 10 superhero movies of all time. And how many of these have big CGI battles? Incredibles does. Again, animated, so it's a little different. Spider-Verse 1 does. Spider-Verse 2, no. On the train. Yeah, yeah okay, so if you want to count that, even though technically all of those would be humans... But it's fine. Dark Knight does not. Um, uh, Batman Begins does not. Uh, Infinity War, for all of its failings and everything, the climax, the ending, it's Thanos 1v1-ing each MCU, each Avenger. Infinity War has a big CGI fight at the end. But it's not the climax. It's not the primary... It's not what you're there for. It's other things that are going on that matter. That is just happening for our characters to have a conflict. But fine, if you want to count Infinity War, we can count Infinity Infinity War. War. No problem. So, so far we are at four if you can't count the animateds, right? Sure, sure, sure. And, and, but... You take them out. Take them out, so we're at one with Infinity War. No. Spider-Verse 2, we don't count because animated. You've done five? Yeah, that was six right there. But Batman Begins, Dark Knight, do not. Sure, that's that's a Nolan trilogy, the... From the same thing. Okay. Civil War, MCU movie, does not. Not a big CGI dra- dragon battle. So the- what's your difference between Bucky, Captain America, and Iron Man fighting in a, in, in a giant concrete well, shooting rockets at each other, and Shang-Chi fighting a dragon? It's just because it's a creature? Yes, because it looks bad. The CGI looks bad. And so you're the- saying if the dragon I- looked better, you would have been fine with it? I would have been more fine with it. I just can't tell what's going on in that fight at all, at all. And you sent me a clip of it a couple months ago, and I was like, I don't know what's going on it here. It looked awesome. And and again, that has nothing to do with like the story. It's like the whole. You could say, okay, they released it, fine. But where the fuck the dragon come from? The dragon just helps them. They don't talk about the dragon at the start of the movie. The start of the movie doesn't start with a a parable that says, oh, there was a great dragon that helped us, but then it went away and it'll only come at the release of the bad guys. Nothing. The dragon is just there because all of a sudden they're in a world of mythical and magical creatures, which again, like, does it add up for me? Maybe it adds up for you or maybe you just like the movie so you're willing to give it up just like how I'm not, I'm willing to give up other things that don't make sense for Last Jedi. Right? You like this movie better than me. I have problems with it that I think are obvious problems that you just don't have. Anyway, first class, not a big CGI dragon battle. No Way Home, not a big CGI dragon battle. And <laughs> X2, not a big CGI dragon battle. No, I'm not giving you any of those. All Three, I- you think Spider-Man, the CGI in Spider-Man looked perfect? In Three no way Spider-Mans home? flipping around and fighting Sandman, the Lizard, and Electro isn't a big CGI battle? It, they're humans. Like... What? Kanchu and the alligator, not humans. And uh, uh, the dragon and then the evil dragon in Shang-Chi, not humans. Those feel like kaiju battles. 
I understand the comp there, but I'm not giving you the No Way Home battle. They're all humans. And you deal with them the He's whole movie. He's a lizard, a sand person, and a piece of electricity. Yeah, they're humans. And they turn them into humans at the end. Why does that matter? Sorry. Why no, does that don't. matter if they're human or not? Because they have to do with the story. It makes sense there. It does not make sense for Moon Knight or shang And again... Okay. Well, we're going to agree to disagree on that. We already have. But yeah. like, I just don't understand why you think like it's just so completely out of left field to have a battle like that. Like you could have told the No Way Home story without having that battle. I don't feel that you could have. And I do feel you could have with Shang-Chi. And I definitely feel you could have without... It, the it, whole Moon, point of that Moon show Knight. was that he wanted to release her. Like that was the whole point. That's what his goal was, no? And that was Shang-Chi's dad's whole goal. And like, I understand you think it's dumb, but like showing a superhero doing something epic also is part of his story character development to show like, hey, he's got these rings now. This is what he can do. Like he's saving people. That's what superheroes do. But he's I, saving the world from this dragon. I, and he wasn't able to do that at the beginning of the movie. I, now he is. Again, I cannot tell what's going on in that fight specifically. Because it's not a human and it's, it's too shaky. Yeah. And other things, it just looks bad. I forgive things if, if it looks good. We're never going to agree on this. I love you, though. So, so the main difference between Godzilla x Kong and that one is it just looks better. Because those are not humans. Yeah. And the movie, I'm looking at Godzilla and I'm looking at Kong the whole movie. Like, I'm dealing with them. They are part of the story. Makes sense. I'm, that's also why I paid for the ticket. I did not pay for the ticket to Shang-Chi once I was in it to see that. I paid to watch Shang-Chi do something awesome. And again, that's, you know, that's why you exist. And that's, you know, I guess I, I exist I just for the Dark like, Knights of the world. Yeah, but I can appreciate Knight, both. Speaking of I the, like the Dark Knight. Speaking of the Dark Knight, did you see that they are all yeah. in cinemas? Yeah. I, Would you like to go tomorrow? Now? I thought it was next. Oh, no. There, I, well, was, I need to see Interstellar. There was a showing at 630 tonight. And unfortunately, we obviously missed that. Um, and then all the showings tomorrow were in the afternoon, like 12-ish to 2-ish. Yeah, well, well, yeah, I definitely want to go to some of those. Me, right? No, you. Yeah. You're right. Ember, the patron. Will Magneto be added to the daddy list? Absolutely. <laughs> Not even a question, dude. The absolutely line delivery was just incredible. Dude, like, he's cr like it's crazy. He's, he's so top hot. two hottest, and obviously it's Goblin Queen. Like, clear no way, number one. Yeah. And then it's Magneto. Yeah, but what about Gambit? Gambit's a close third, but, but like Gambit's so hot in the crop top, in the white suit with the purple yeah. scarf. Yeah, I know. I think he's got. And then he uses the scarf, dude. When he used the scarf, that ah, was sick. It was so cool. Yeah, that was really sick. But like, I think Magneto's just presence and his shoulders and the the long gray hair. I think it, I think it's a. Clear. It's not even gray. It's white. It's crazy. Favorite tabletop card slash board game. Uh, I'm the board game guy. Catan. And yours is Monopoly. I love Monopoly. I love Catan a lot. I used to play it like every day. Will you ever play Fortnite on your stream again? Uh, yeah, so I played Fortnite um, this week because they added Avatar. That was the only reason I played it. Yeah. I, it's like impressive how bad I am at it. Oh, really? Uh, so it's like I'm so bad at it that it's not enjoyable for me. And I think it makes a boring stream. I did spend Ooh. I did spend quite a lot of money on V Bucks to get all of the skins for Avatar, mm. and Aang comes out on Friday mm. when we're filming this. Like, so I might stream it a couple more times. It probably will not be a super reoccurring thing. I'm gonna stick to Fall Guys and Resident Evil, and I'm gonna start doing trivia. I want to do like live trivia, fun, with, like, like with a roommate and like duct tape them up and stuff, and like do that on stream. Fun, yeah. Um, you know, I've never played Fortnite in my life. Like, not for an instant. It'd be fun. Middles, the patron. Would you rather go on a date with Aquafina or put on a full outfit right out of the shower still soaked? I'm going on a date with Aquafina. I think so, too. I good. think it would help my career. Yeah, good for content, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there a villain slash hero you think you could outsmart slash defeat? Probably not. There's got to be one that's super lame, right? What a freaking... the. Batman puppet guy. Frick that Batmite? Guy. No, not Batmite. Oh. The uh Scarface. Oh. He's a bum, dude. 
There are some stupid Batman villains. He's like a mob boss. If I just in, in a room with him, it's just a puppet and like a little lame dude yeah. that's got like autism or something. Andrew. Does he not? He's got something. He's, but, got, yeah. he's got some stuff. Jeez. I could beat him up. <laughs> How many people are in your basement? Well, wow, that's quite a question to come after that. Uh, we don't have a basement. No, we don't. We live in California. There aren't too many basements out here, right? But if we did have a basement. Six. I was Seven gonna, or eight? I was going to say five to ten. Nice. Nice. What do you think the three best Marvel episodes are? How perfect. Yeah. Um, I know mine. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I'm going to keep it to one per franchise because I'm not going to do X-Men 97 because it would be all three of them probably. Sure, yeah, yeah. But so I'll go, the best episode of X-Men 97 is episode five. Uh, I think episode three of Hawkeye is incredible. And I really, really, really love episode two of WandaVision. No Loki in the top three? Loki episode five of season one would be up there. Maybe episode six as well. Maybe episode four as well. I mean, all of Loki season one is really good. But that those would all be honorable mentions. We're not counting Marvel. Daredevil. No. If you were to count Daredevil, there are some incredible episodes of Daredevil. I got to finish it. Are Rachel you... just finished it. Nice. Are you guys excited for Creature Commandos? As far as the DCE or the new whatever the frick it's called. The DCU. As, um, as far as it goes, that's one that's at the bottom of my list. Yeah, but it's like the first one. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I just don't know what they're doing. But I am still excited for it because what the frick, you know, James Gunn's doing something. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm with you. And if they're leading with that, hopefully. It's I wasn't excited for the Suicide Squad. And then it oh, turned out to be awesome. You were wrong about that. I was super excited for that. Uh, Haru Colt, the patron. If you had to pick superpowers to give each other what would they be so andrew picks for alex and alex picks for andrew it can be like any superpower oh i know i know i know mine i know mine all right i would do some sort of like cosmic power where every time you like sneeze or cough the 49ers win the super bowl of a bitch. I was going to do something so nice. I was going to do something so nice. I was going to do super endurance so you would never have to sleep. I would like, <laughs> like I was going to do something super nice. Fuck you. I hate you so much. That was unbelievable. I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Saka style the patron. Zutara or Rogue Nito? Rogue Nito. I like Rogue Nito. Rogue Nito. I think it's fun. It's not even close. Uh, is Wolverine surviving three months in the attack on Titan World? Yeah. He's healing. Yeah, I feel like he's going to do How the fuck are they going to kill him? I mean, they eat you. Adamantium. He's going to tear right through a Titan. Yeah, they're pretty... Yeah, the way you kill a Titan is especially like slicing the back of its neck, too. It's called the nape of the neck. you got to slice it. And then it's dead. They have regular swords in Attack on Titan, right? Like they use you use yeah. them to fly. It's the yeah. ODM gear, right? Yeah, yeah. But no, like, I think he's surviving pretty easily. For three months? Yeah. Easy. And he's got tracking, like yeah. he could probably solve all of the problems in the Attack on I Titan. Well, I'm not giving him that. I mean the, the nine founding Titans could probably do something to him. They've got some powers and stuff. Oh really? They yeah. can like fly and shit? Uh yeah, there's some Titans that can fly. Wow. One, one can fly. But then wow. like, there's one that, like, the Warhammer Titan can, yeah. like, create, like, hammers made of, like, glass and, like, spikes and Ooh, stuff. That'll fuck. That'll, that'll, that'll mess up Wolverine. And, bit. and, uh, Armin, the, what, what Titan is that? The Colossal Titan is, like, literally a nuke. When he transforms into the Colossal Titan, it sets off a nuke. Yes, but Logan survived survives nuke. nukes. I know, I'm just saying, there's, there's some other stuff to contend with. There are panels where, like, you just see Logan's skeleton, and then he's a regular person in, like, the next panel. It's crazy. Those are a little ridiculous. That's, like, Deadpool-level regeneration, not just, like, yeah, healing. Well, technically, that's where Deadpool's powers come from. There are many iterations of Deadpool where his strain of mutant is the same as Wolverine's. It's just Wolverine has the skeleton. I always, I always thought Wolverine was, like, more of a... He has the healing factor, so, like, he can heal, but Deadpool can, like, literally regenerate. Generate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, it's a question. There's just so much There's stuff. There's a lot of shit. Andrew Berg, the patron. Who is your favorite magician, Andrew? Um, So my two favorite big ones are going to be David Copperfield and David Blaine. 
Uh, David Copperfield, because he is just the goat. Like, the things that he's done is just... Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty, walking through the Great Wall of China. Um, all of his TV specials are, are really, really good. I think he's a great performer. Um, I think... Uh, I, I, I watched a lot of his stuff growing up. David Blaine, because he's literally insane, and he's not just a magician. He does, like, some actual stunts that I think are on another level from most other humans. Uh, the stuff that he's been able to put himself through and learn. I really respect that. And then some lesser known ones growing up, I really liked like Eric LeClaire and Justin Flom. I don't really like him as much anymore. Um, uh, but uh, I saw him in, in, in person and I bought one of his magic tricks. I actually performed it at the avatar party. Uh, he created one of those tricks that I did. So um, anybody else? I don't like Chris Angel as much as other people. Uh, Doctor, it says Doom versus Vader. Who wins? I assume it's Doctor Doom. That'd be Vader, right? Yes. Okay. But there are some iterations where Doctor Doom is omnipotent and everything like that. But if we are talking baseline Doctor Doom, if we're considering both of their armies or removing both of their armies, I do think the power of the Force is yeah. greater than Doctor Doom's powers. Um, I was going to say that you are my favorite magician, Andrew. Oh. I really like Frederick De Silva, too. Thanks. He's really good. Thanks. Middle's the patron. Oh, and um, oh. Terry Evanswood. Because okay. I've met him a couple times and I saw him in person. And uh, he is one of the magicians that I saw in person that inspired me to do magic. I don't think I'd be a magician if I didn't go see him. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Middle's the patron. How does it feel to be my fall guy's son? And then in parentheses, explain that to hat guy. Um, so on fall guys, I started challenging some viewers and patrons and stuff. And mm -hmm. then we would both get into the same lobby, but not on the same team. And then you could get points based on how many rounds you made it through. So like if I died in round one and you made it to round four, you'd get three points and stuff like that. And um, he's the only person that has beaten me so far. Well, you're his son. Yeah. No. No, I'm going to beat him. We're going to play again next week or something. It was it was very intense. He beat me by like literally like one point each time. Do it, you know who Middles is? My father. He made those for us. Oh, he did tell me that. Yeah. His name's Dante. He's good at trash talk too. It was a lot of fun. Good. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook him though. So. All right. All right. More excited for Fantastic Four or Superman? Superman. Superman. Gotta be. But those are like some of my top two most anticipated movies moving forward. Yes. Uh, Invincible or The Boys? Obvious answer for me. I want to hear yours. I think I have to abstain, dude. I don't know. That one's so tough. Interesting. My answer is obviously Invincible because I've never seen The Boys. Yeah. I've only seen it one episode. I might have to go Invincible. I think The Boys is just... We've got more of The Boys. It's like on this like fourth or fifth season. Mm-hmm. Invincible, we had to wait so long. It seems more disjointed. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like I like some of the characters and storytelling in Invincible a little bit more, but like the boys is just so, so much. I don't know. All right, we're going to end off this episode with the weekly question. The yes. question of the week, if you will. Last week, uh, we asked you, um, if you were stuck in a room with five bears um, and you get one fictional bear to help you fight those bears, what are you going with and why? Mm -hmm. So here's what we got. Yes. Um, so I don't, I, maybe you can help me with this. I, uh, Belly B on YouTube said, I think if I'm picking a fictional bear, I'm probably going with the mom from brother bear. Yes. The one who becomes the spirit bear, because if the brother can transform Kanai into a bear, the mom spirit could probably transform the five other bears into humans. Yes. I haven't seen brother bear enough to remember anything about it. I very faintly remember this, but yes, I do believe that this bear is some kind of bear deity or bear yeah. God. So I do think that that's a good take. I think that that's, he's, he's using a hundred percent of his brain for that answer. No, it was a great answer. It yeah. might be the best answer. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, for the question, I'm going with either the evil bear from brave Mordu or Ted. And he said, just hot box the room. Hotboxing the room is an interesting, uh, bold strategy. Let's see how it plays out for him, Cotton. And then... <laughs> Mordu, the evil bear. From yeah, Brad. that's a good one as well, because that bear's really fucking tall. Yeah, he's scary. Yeah. I just, but I, he is still just like a normal bear, right? It's a normal bear. I feel like you need an enhancement to your bear. Well, speaking of enhancements, Spartans in the, in the Discord said, uh, just sent a gif of the Care Bears. Ooh. They've got powers, I think, in some iterations. They can, like, shoot beams of, like, happiness. Yeah, rainbows and stuff. They're, like, flying and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I don't hate it. For the bear Paddington, he would make, he would have marmalade with him, and everyone knows bears love marmalade. 
I think they're killing the F out of Paddington. I'm going to be honest with you. I would love to see that, though. That would be so fucking You would fun. love to see Paddington get wrecked? Absolutely murdered. You Have know, you I've, seen the Paddington movies? I haven't seen neither. I watched Paddington 2 on a plane, and everyone says it's like the best movie ever. It's not. Oh! It's not. Uh, he's cute, though. Uh, that Nicolas Cage, Pedro Pascal movie, they specifically say that Paddington 2 is like the best movie ever. Yeah. Maybe I went in with too high expectations. Um, a friend of mine... My John. dear buddy John, in fact, prefers Paddington 1 to Paddington 2. Thinks Paddington 2 is overrated. But he loves Paddington 2. He just prefers Paddington 1. Interesting. Kung Fu Panda is the only right answer. That is the right answer. Kung Fu Panda is a good answer. Poe could take him down easily. I think so as well. Yeah. But I think the bear deity is interesting. I do like that. And then there's another answer that you're missing. There's two answers that you're missing that I've specifically wrote down. Let's see if we get into it. Okay. Uh, I would definitely choose Winnie the Pooh to defend me. He's been murdering people in Blood and Honey. Oh. That variation of Did it? Did you hear Blood and Honey 2 has it's 100% like on Rotten Tomatoes? Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. uh, and Have you only seen it from their marketing, though? Mm. I kind of think it's a bit. No. I No. Uh, someone we saw, Sean Talks Movies, I think, or somebody really? saw it and was like, it's not the best movie in the world, but this one actually has like a plot and was like kind of interesting. Interesting. I don't know. I'm deploying Freddy Fazbear. It's not a bad answer either. The evil possessed animatronic. The issue is, is it's five regular bears. You think they're beating him? He, he's like, killing people. He's killing people like a bear. Bjorn from The Hobbit. I'm not familiar. Love you though. I think that's a good answer. Let me show you. Let me show you. Is he, he, uh, I think he's a human that transforms into a bear. That's pretty powerful. That's a scene of him fighting. He's like a big, like, it's not a bad answer. Is he big? Can you look up Bjorn's stats? Height and weight. Uh, he's a skin changer. Power. How powerful is Bjorn? Uh, let's see. Bjorn was a warrior with great strength who could turn into a great black bear. He was tall. No, that's just describing him as a human. Special features. Massive, powerful, unique creature. Let me see pictures of this motherfucker. He's not. Nah, it's not worth it. I can't find any good ones. It's mostly him as a human, so forget. Um, I would take Cocaine Bear because if he shares something with me, we own. Cocaine Bear is one of the two I had written down. I saw a lot of Cocaine Bear suggestions. Cocaine Bear, I think, I think, I don't know if it could quite beat the five bears, but Cocaine Bear is going to be a problem. He's not really, oh, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Someone says Baloo. Baloo's not going to be that helpful. Uh, Spirit Bear is on there again. And then another one with Paddington. Uh, I call it Paddington, hit record on my phone, hand it over, and tell him to watch me single-handedly dismantle all five bears with only my hands one by one. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's not where I thought that was going. Calls Paddington and just like, watch me F up these bears. Yeah, That's actually, so funny. And then they're going to get tea after. Uh, Onion said, is David Montgomery a fictional bear since he's with the Lions now? I like that. I like that. Did anybody say just the Chicago Bears football team? No, nah, I don't think so. That's um, technically one bear. Uh. Teddy Barra from Country Bear Jamboree. Simply, she is an absolute unit and has the voice of an angel. I saw that one. Teddy Barra. Oh, yeah. She's the one that swings down from the ceiling, dude. Oh, damn. That's pretty good. She's going to get effed up, though. Uh, they might get all horny for her, though. That's also true. They might try and fuck her. They yeah. might kill each other trying to fuck her. That's what And then is. she slips some poison into it. Um... Uh, Blue, he would just sing them to death. And then this guy also said, also Bosco, because he's just a bear. Who the fuck is Bosco? He's the bear in Avatar. Oh, just that's, a Just a bear? That's a really funny joke. Man, this place is weird. Yeah. All right. And then I've got one. Okay, well, yeah, dude. You missed it. Somebody said the bear Jew from Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so just Eli Roth, the director of Thanksgiving. Nice. <laughs> just carrying a freaking bat with barbed wire on it. Uh, so 
Thank you for everyone who suggested and commented on Discord and on YouTube. Yes. Uh, we also try to throw them up on Instagram. Yes. Uh, if So for this week, uh, give us your best answers for next week, and we will read them. Uh, we always want explanations. Make them funny. Make them interesting. Give us your thoughts. Um, if In honor of X-Men 97, if you could use one mutant's powers for only six hours, which would it be and why? What would you do? Let us know, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you again for all that you do. We love you. We love you most. Mwah.